In this video, we're gonna reveal the hands down absolute best exercise that you can do or give to patients for low back pain. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome to PhysioTutors. We have probably clickbaited you into watching this video because you might be looking for the magic exercise or fix to make low back pain magically disappear. The truth is, there is no and can never be one single exercise that is the best for low back pain or any other hurtful body part or muscle or whatsoever. In fact, this way of thinking is very simplistic and focusing on a body part or pathology rather than a person. If there was one best exercise, our profession would basically become redundant and patients could follow cookie cutter approaches. But let's first look at the effectiveness of different forms of exercise for patients with low back pain. First of all, a meta-analysis by Searle et al. in the year 2015 has shown that strength and resistance exercises as well as coordination stabilization exercises are effective in reducing pain in patients with chronic low back pain, although effect sizes are usually rather small. So that's pretty good news. Now let's look a bit closer at different exercise programs and their effectiveness. A study by Marshall et al. in the year 2013 compared Pilates exercises with stationary biking and while Pilates was superior at 8 weeks, the results were equal in the long term at 6 months. Then there is this pretty well-known study by Schneidermann and colleagues from 2013 who have found that walking is as effective as specific exercises for the low back at 6 weeks. It has to be mentioned though that the people in the study were all sedentary so we cannot assume that the outcome would be the same in a more active population. Furthermore, there is tons of research that compared core stabilization exercises with general strengthening exercises for the low back. Some of these studies by Smith et al., Sarah Giotto et al., Luo Mayoki, Wang, Coulomb, amongst others, show that low load stabilization exercises might be a tiny bit better at reducing pain at short term, but all of them showed that general strengthening is equally effective at long term. At last, a study by Asa et al. in the year 2015 compared low load motor control exercises with deadlifts. In a study, the low load motor control group outperformed the high load group on short term, but again, long term results were equally effective. So, the good news from all of these studies is that doing something is better than doing nothing. So, one might argue that the best exercise is the one that gets done. But why choose for one form of exercise only? Ben Cormack from Core Kinetic compares different exercise modes as different vitamins that our body needs, just like in a balanced diet. So you might want to incorporate strength, high load and low load, coordination, power, endurance and graded exposure exercises, as well as movement games, etc. into a well-balanced exercise program. Glasgow et al. in the year 2015 thus also mentioned that an optimal loading program consists of different key variables and mechanisms. One thing we know from research is that patients with low back pain often display with decreased movement variety. So using different exercise modalities might be one way to increase movement variability. What is interesting is that we are always thinking that getting stronger, more flexible, better at activating certain muscles or improving movement faults, etc. is what explains the effect of our exercise program. However, a systematic review by Steiger et al. in the year 2012 has shown that treatment effects are not attributable to changes in the musculoskeletal system. There might be other changes that are responsible for the effects such as diffuse noxious inhibitory control, the release of pain-reducing chemicals in your brain, maybe just more movement in itself, or psychosocial factors such as decreased movement-related fear, increased confidence, and so on. But in fact, we just don't really know. So how specific should we be? 
a specific problem such as a specific low back pain probably do not have to be body part or structure specific but also benefit from a more general approach. On the other hand, a specific problem such as Achilles tendinopathy in which we know the nociceptive structure will benefit from a more structure specific approach such as load on the Achilles tendon by calf raises for example. But even if we have a structure specific problem, we should not only be specific to a certain joint, tendon or muscle, but specific to the person in front of us. Research always looks at the average effect of a group with two or more very standardized interventions. However, the person in front of you could deviate from this standardized mean. For example, isometric exercises generally work well to decrease pain. At the same time, research has shown that exercise-induced analgesia might not occur in patients with central sensitization, but actually increases pain levels. This means that we will always have to be flexible and adapt our treatment if it does not seem to be effective in our patients after, say, two or three sessions, even if research might suggest otherwise. Another big reason that there can never be the single best exercise for every person is because different people need different amounts of vitamin. So what you'll have to ask yourself with every exercise you're giving to patients is what do you want them to get from this exercise? It could be that you are trying to increase tissue capacity or exercise adherence. Another target could be to challenge their belief structure or to alter their movement strategies or it could be pain relief. On top of that, the ideal exercise is tailored to a patient's level of skill and irritability. All of these different areas should influence exercise selection to make it person-specific. For example, a young weightlifter who has to return to high-level performance after a first episode of low back pain might need maximum strength, power and work on his technique. On the other hand, a 70-year-old sedentary pensioner with chronic low back pain and apprehension to bend forward due to maladaptive illness beliefs will probably need a graded exposure program with lots of reassurance and education. For the very same reasons, we cannot expect that generic exercises will lead to optimal outcomes. The challenge for us as therapists is to listen to our patient's story and to ask ourselves which vitamins he or she needs and then to select the appropriate exercises to give them these different vitamins. Alright, this was our video on the best exercise for low back pain. Shout out at this point to Ben Cormack from CoKinetic who inspired us to discuss various concepts in this video. If you click on the video right next to me, you can watch how we apply these concepts in different exercise programs. More in-depth information can be found in our future course on the spine on our website study.physiotutors.com. This was Kai for Physiotutors. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.